What if I told you that Bonnie isn't really Kuma's daughter? What if I told you that Bonnie isn't even Ginny's daughter? What if I told you that Bonnie is Ginny herself? And that she's also Luffy's mother? Well, this seems to be actually a pretty popular idea, but also very wild. So let's go through it together, shall we? Ever since her introduction, Jewelry Bonnie has been quite the mysterious character. Given the nature of her devil fruit, we don't know her age. She was shown to have intriguing pre-existing relationships with lots of important figures, including Sakazuki, but most of all being the so-called daughter of former warlord slash revolutionary Bartholomew Kuma. And although she is the character in focus at Egghead Island, nothing so far has made any of the mysteries surrounding her character any clearer. But Oda has dropped some hints and many suggestive clues that may tell us how old Bonnie is, how she's related to Kuma, and why she's considered his daughter. And when we put all of this together, I think you and I may just be able to figure it out. The first major speculation is that Bonnie is most likely not Kuma's biological daughter. Perhaps one of the most important clues that we've been given so far that will explain this entire scenario is the introduction of a new character in Ginny. Ginny was first introduced in Kuma's backstory that we are witnessing through Bonnie, herself who witnessed it via a memory bubble that Kuma left behind via his Niku Devil Fruit powers. Are you following? Ginny is the sister of Ivankov, a former slave who spent many years with Kuma to the point that she even proposed that they marry, the two going on to join the revolutionary army together. And as soon as Ginny was introduced, speculations were flying right, left and center. Some fans declaring her to be Luffy's mother, while others were convinced that she was Bonnie's. Especially given the similar name between Bonnie and Ginny, their character traits, particularly that of gluttony, not to mention their appearance. But as the flashback continued, showing us events as recent as up to 14 years ago, something hard to miss was the fact that Bonnie has so far been nowhere to be seen. And as we've already established, it's true that Bonnie's age is unknown because of her powers, but the formal age that she's most often shown in is roughly that of someone in their 20s, someone certainly older than the age of 40. Meaning that if she really was Kuma's daughter, she should have made her appearance by now. Now this doesn't completely prove that Bonnie isn't actually Kuma's child, because she may actually be a lot younger than she is usually portrayed to be, and she may have been born after the latest flashback event that we've been privy to so far. And this does seem to be certainly possible because another big clue about Bonnie seems to be the number of different characters still referring to her as a child. Vegapunk, Kizaru, and Saturn all seem to consider her as a little girl, suggesting that Bonnie is in fact a lot younger than she usually appears, which would make sense if she was born sometime in the last 14 years after the events of the flashback that we've seen so far in the story, meaning that she could still be Kuma's daughter. But there are a few other details that seem to contradict this. Firstly, the most obvious one being the fact that Bonnie and Kuma don't share family names. We know Kuma to be Bartholomew Kuma, whereas Bonnie is Jewelry Bonnie. Although to be fair, Bonnie's surname could be more of a nickname, an epithet as a reference to a devil fruit ability that turns the years that she takes from people into sparkly jewels. Speaking of which, I dare you to click the sparkly red subscribe button. This jewel may not grant you age manipulation, but it does give you the power to increase the size of the joy fleet. And I'm on a mission to get 100k subscribers and I'd really appreciate if you would join me. But anyways, another and perhaps more compelling reason why Bonnie might not be Kuma's child is that Kuma was shown explicitly not to want to marry and I'm guessing have kids. When Ginny asked Kuma to marry her, he declined, fearing what would happen to her because of his buccaneer heritage, similar to what he witnessed with his own parents. Now you could say that Kuma finally acquiesces once Ginny is saved from the world government. Maybe the idea of losing her making him finally realize that they shouldn't waste another moment apart. Certainly possible, but I personally find it unlikely. If Kuma was worried about putting people in danger even before Ginny was captured, I don't think her going through that experience would make him any less worried, especially to also bring a child into this world. Besides, the other obvious detail is that Bonnie and Kuma simply don't look alike. Kuma is of the Buccaneer heritage, an extremely rare bloodline that shares its lineage with giants, making them also very large, strong, and sturdy. And Bonnie is simply far from that. Even though Kuma himself had a human non-Bakani mother, he himself displayed the physical traits of his father. And so Bonnie, even if she was mixed race, should display at least some characteristics, but she doesn't. In fact, Bonnie is a splitting image of Ginny, just without the freckles, but we'll get to that later. Although to be fair, when Bonnie uses her devil fruit powers, specifically the distorted future 
technique. We see Bonnie's physique change, making her much larger, and she does seem to resemble the stature of the Buccaneer people. But given the name of the attack slash ability, and how she's also used it on, say, Luffy, I think that attack allows her to turn herself and others into the alternative future form of that person. For example, for Luffy, it was a future where he's straggly and vulnerable. For Bonnie, it's a distorted future where she's big and strong. Plus, we've been told that Kuma is the last of the Buccaneer race, and by Saint Saturn as well, whom, out of all people, would probably know if there was another Buccaneer alive or not. So all of this heavily, heavily suggests that Bonnie isn't Kuma's biological daughter, which would actually very much fit the theme of self-made families in One Piece, which is full of parental figures who aren't biologically related. Which then takes us to the next most obvious scenario. Bonnie is Ginny's daughter that Kuma raises in her stead. Again, we'd have to point out the fact that Bonnie hasn't been seen so far in Kuma's backstory. A backstory which has followed Ginny as much as it has followed Kuma after the events of God Valley. So, if Bonnie is Ginny's daughter, she would again have to have been born after Ginny's capture 14 years ago. Which again would still make sense and explain why people keep referring to Bonnie as a child. And while it could again fit that theme of adopted families in One Piece and Kuma's character that he took Bonnie in as his own, I personally find it a little hard to accept that Ginny had a child to someone else and not Kuma. It's clear that Ginny loved Kuma. Even after being rejected to get married, Ginny is seen very excited to see Kuma again after the two had been separated during the revolutionary army missions. Her squad even teases her about being in love with him, which in my mind makes it quite unlikely for Ginny to have had Bonnie with another man. Unless Bonnie is actually the bittersweet result of a tragic event that happened to Ginny while she was captured, and while I know One Piece gets dark, like really dark sometimes. I personally can't imagine Oda getting quite so explicit to make Bonnie the offspring of rape. And so another alternative, and one that doesn't get quite as dark, is that Bonnie is actually Ginny herself. The idea is that when Kuma found Ginny, she was under immense torment and stress after her experiences in captivity, and the only way to preserve her was to take away her memories, manipulating them so that she would think of their relationship as father and daughter. And while we could say that Kuma's powers explain how he could take away Ginny's memories. We don't really know how he could manipulate her to think that she was a child, unless somehow Vegapunk was involved, or she really used her devil fruit powers, which she already somehow had back then, to turn herself into a child and relive her life as Kuma's daughter. But a detail that seems to contradict this idea is the fact that after Bonnie learns the truth from Kuma's memories, in chapter 1094, upon seeing another one of those pacifistas, Bonnie still refers to it as dad, which may just be out of habit, but I feel like it would be somewhat odd of Bonnie slash Ginny to still be calling Kuma that, even after finding out the truth from his memories that he is actually her best friend slash lover. And going right back to the beginning when I said that Bonnie is Ginny and might also be Luffy's mother, now that seems to me to be the wildest yet, but it does also seem to be a pretty popular idea, so let's discuss it. Now I suppose this could make sense because Dragon and Ginny obviously had a relationship as part of the revolutionaries together, but we know Luffy is 19 years old, which would mean that they had to have had Luffy 19 years ago, which is before Ginny got captured, and we didn't see a hint of that in the flashback. Now, to be fair, this is Kuma's flashback and not Dragon's flashback, which may be why we didn't see Luffy, but I still just can't see Ginny betraying her love for Kuma like that, because 14 years ago, we still see her again very much in love with Kuma. So now let's go explore another idea, one that also involves Bonnie being actually Ginny herself, but sort of not. And I think you may know where I'm going with this. This clone piece. What if Bonnie is Ginny's clone? The Egghead Island has really flipped One Piece on its head with the introduction of clones. Aside from the Seraphims, we were also introduced to Stussy, the world's first successful clone, a fully living, breathing human being created as a complete replica of another person. And something that I think is particularly interesting is that in chapter 1072, the same chapter where Stussy's true nature as a clone was revealed, this chapter began with Vegapunk's words declaring the success of of his cloning experimentation. But not only that, because these words were immediately followed by Bonnie. And while at first the chapter structure of introducing an idea only to go back to it at the very end seems to be in tune with the classic circular structure that Oda often uses in his writing, this may have also distracted us from a major clue that he was giving us. That by narrating Vegapunk's success at creating clones, coinciding with the interactions between Vegapunk and Bonnie, this was to hint that another one of Vegapunk 
Pang's successful experiments, another one of his living, breathing, fully functioning clones was right in front of us in that very panel. And other details that might support the idea that Bonnie is in fact Ginny's clone may be Bonnie's interactions with other notable figures, particularly those affiliated with the world government. One of the earliest clues may have been as early as chapter 595 when Sakazuki comments that he was horrified that she had run away from the government, which upon first glance seemed to mean that Bonnie as a pirate was once under captivity by the world government. But this could take on a completely new meaning if we find out that Bonnie is in fact a clone. Sakazuki's words suggesting that Bonnie is seen as government property. There's also the way that Kizaru talks to her at Egghead, which suggests some sort of prior relationship between the two. And despite her being a pirate, he talks to her with familiarity, perhaps even a hint of friendliness. We also see Sentamaru saving and protecting Bonnie, valuing her life. And we also know that Bonnie has spent some time at Egghead already, back when she was a kid. But what if Bonnie didn't just spend some time there? What if this is the place where Bonnie was actually born or created? And this would explain why she's so familiar with the world government high officials. We know that both Sentamaru and Kizaru spent a lot of time with Vegapunk, Sentamaru being his bodyguard and Kizaru having been the source of the pacifist's lasers. Not to mention the image of him as a child suggesting Kizaru to have been quite studious and so it seems like he would have spent a lot of time at the lab. This would also explain why the world government thinks they have a claim to Bonnie because she was in fact a product of Vegapunk's. But how did this happen? Why would Vegapunk make a clone of Ginny? The scenario that I think would make the most sense as to why a clone of Ginny would be created is if Ginny herself already died. I doubt that Ginny or Kuma would allow the world government to make a clone Ginny in order to fulfill world government purposes. A more likely scenario is if Kuma finds Ginny, saving her from captivity, but unfortunately he's already too late. Imagine Kuma finds Ginny's lifeless body and tries to save her, using his powers to rid her of all of her injuries and pain, but she still won't come back to life. Because as far as we know, Kuma's powers is limited to taking someone's pain away, not to be able to bring back life. And just imagine how tragically fitting that would be for Kuma's story. A character who wants nothing more than to save as many people as he can and was granted an ability to free people from their pain and suffering, which he has used and done countless of times, but he was unable to save the person most closest to him, causing Kuma even more pain and suffering. A martyr indeed. It just feels so one piece, doesn't it? Hence why Kuma is also in such a haste to save Bonnie, even in his supposedly mindless state, valuing his daughter over everything else because he doesn't want her to suffer the same fate as Ginny. Another case where a parent's love trumps science and logic, much like how Rouge was able to defy science out of love for Ace. So say that Kuma takes Ginny to Vegapunk in desperation, hoping that Vegapunk would be able to bring her back to life. But the scientist isn't able to help either. What Vegapunk offers instead is to make a clone of Ginny, an alternate Ginny who doesn't have to experience the things that Ginny did. No slavery, no hunger. Or maybe Kuma in his desperation to bring back Ginny expelled her memories, planning on inserting it back into the clone so that he could have Ginny back. But that's not really how cloning works. By creating a clone, Vegapunk has, in effect, created a new person. And so it wasn't as simple as the clone just adopting all of Ginny's memories as her own. And that could also be why the bubble has remained outside and not returned to Kuma, despite in chapter 1097 us being told that the pain that Kuma takes away from people has to go somewhere and that if it's not absorbed by someone else, it will just return back to the original person. But the memory bubble that we saw couldn't be returned because that memory is an amalgamation of both Kuma and Ginny's memory. That memory bubble that Bonnie experienced not only involves her father's memories, but also the memories of the original person that she has been duplicated from. Because as we saw in chapter 1097, we see that when Kuma absorbs the pain of multiple citizens of Sorbe Kingdom, he's been able to amalgamate it into one large bubble, not separate bubbles for each person. So that could be the same with memories, where he's been able to combine the memories of both himself and Ginny, leaving that one large memory bubble that can't be returned because Ginny is dead. That may also be why Kuma and Vegapunk are so adamant that Bonnie doesn't find out and access the memories of Kuma because they don't want her to find out that she is in fact a clone. In saying that, it personally seemed like to me that Kuma only actually learned how to expel memories from a person from Vegapunk. Back in chapter 1072, we see that it was Vegapunk's idea to produce 
false memories in the name of science, and it seemed as if Kuma hadn't really considered this before. But it could be the case that Kuma just didn't want to expel his own memories, and he did in fact know that he could expel the memories of someone else, and it is a pretty short series of panels, so it's really hard to say. Anyways, so having failed to recreate Ginny, Kuma raises Bonnie as his own, giving her the life that he wished Ginny had, or giving her the life that he knows Ginny would have liked their child to have. And another odd fact, a little piece of detail, which may be intentional or may be coincidental, is the fact that Ginny Weasley, the fictional character in Harry Potter, is played by Bonnie Wright, which really doesn't mean all that much and may be a bit of a reach here, but it is a pretty fun detail that some may say adds to the whole Ginny is Bonnie relationship. So here we are with this very messy web full of so many potential hints, but also just as many counter arguments. And now that we've laid it all out, what do you think? Has the situation become any clearer to you? Do you have an idea as to how Bonnie, Ginny, and Kuma are all related? Well, let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like the video and please do subscribe to this channel for more One Piece content. Thank you to all of our Patreon and channel members and thank you for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.